In this video, we'll introduce the idea of forced mechanical vibrations, which is the application of non-homogeneous second-order linear differential equations. So we started our whole discussion of second-order equations with physical problems. The idea is being the mass on a spring problem and RLC circuits. And both of these reduce down to an equation of the form a y double prime plus b y prime plus c y equals some function g of t on the other side. For our previous modeling, we dealt with just g of t equals zero, which were our unforced or free vibrations. And those were homogeneous equations. Now I want to extend into forced vibrations, which is g of t is not zero. And deal with solving now non-homogeneous equations in this context and seeing how that relates to the physical system that these things are modeling. Now, why do we call it a forced vibration? It again comes from the mass on a spring analogy. The mass on a spring equation really comes down to a force equation. It's saying that the sort of net force, which is mass, here the A term, times acceleration, which is Y double prime, equals the other side, which is the two different forces, the negative C times Y, that was our spring constant, or the Hooke's law constant there, minus B times Y prime, that's our drag coefficient. And then we may also have some extra applied force to the system. And that becomes our G of T on the right hand side of the equation because that is some extra term that's only dependent on time. And it sets up to solve out the equation overall because this must be how the net force works that gives us the acceleration of the object. So this F of T here will turn into our G of T that is our non-homogeneous term on the right hand side. And that gives us our forced vibration equation. Now there's two options here based on the value of this B coefficient here. We could have, as before, an undamped forced vibration or a damped forced vibration, depending on if B is zero or non-zero. If B is zero, then we have an undamped forced vibration. And if B is not zero, or if B is bigger than zero, then we have a damped forced vibration. Now you could do this for any function f of t here. Any sort of forcing would work and give you results. But the most interesting ones comes from when this forcing function is also periodic. So in terms of what we're going to handle here, we're going to assume that this g of t function is a cosine function. So it's going to be f0 for some magnitude of the force times cosine of omega times t, where omega is going to be the sort of frequency of oscillation of this force. So we're going to assume that we have a periodic input force that's going to act on this system. And we want to see how these interact and what, what comes out of this sort of result here. So the first part to mention is damped forced oscillators. So if you have an equation of this form, we've got our normal damped mass and a spring equation on the left and our forcing term F0 cosine omega t on the right. There are three options for the solutions to the modulus equation, the part that doesn't care about the right hand side. And that's real and distinct roots, complex roots, or repeated roots. Now, what does that mean for this solution? Well, in any case, since we know that both B and C are positive, we know that for real roots, these will both be negative. For complex roots, the fact that B is positive means that the real part of this root will be negative. And if it's a repeat root, the same thing happens. The value must be negative. That's going to go in the exponential. So what does this mean? All three of these solutions contain exponential terms with negative coefficients. So for instance, in the real and distinct case, you might have like an e to the minus three t and an e to the minus two t. Those are both negative coefficients. In the complex case, you might have e to the minus four t sine of three t and an e to the minus four t cosine of three t. For the repeated root, an e to the minus t and a t e to the minus t might happen. These are sort of your three options here. What do we notice here? These all go to zero as t gets large. That's for the homogeneous part. What about the non-homogeneous part? Well, if we go up to our equation again, we had an f0 cosine omega t. If we think about using undetermined coefficients, then for the non-homogeneous part, the solution is of the form a cosine omega t plus b sine of omega t for some values of a and b. But the point here is these do not go to zero as time goes on. So what can we see from this? 
we can see then that our general solution will look like a C1 Y1 of T plus a C2 Y2 of T plus an A cosine omega T plus a B sine of omega T. And we know that this first part here is what solves the homogeneous equation and will go to zero as T gets large. And the second part over here solves the non-homogeneous part and does not go to zero as t gets large, right? It stays oscillating forever. So we give names to these two things. This part here in orange that solves the homogeneous equation goes to zero is what's called the transient solution. That it's transient, it sort of goes away with time. Whereas the part that sticks around forever and solves the non-homogeneous part is called the steady state solution or the steady periodic solution. So the main point here is for a damped forced oscillation, I could always split the solution into two parts. There's the part that solved the homogeneous equation and is transient, is gonna go away in time. And the part that solves the non-homogeneous is derived from the forcing energy, and that's called the steady state or the steady periodic solution. One other interesting fact from this is that the initial conditions only show up in C1 and C2, which are in the transient solution. Which means that over time, that part goes away. It's, so after a while, the conditions do not matter for the overall behavior of the system. It really all just depends on the forcing and the part that came from the conditions doesn't matter anymore after a certain amount of time. So that's the idea of these damped force authors and how we talk about these solutions to these things in terms of the transient and the steady state solution. How you can think about these problems and how they behave for trying to model a physical system.